My grandmother used to say, don't talk politics at the dinner table. That's because talking politics often ended with everyone shouting at each other. But imagine having a conversation about politics where everyone involved goes away with something to think about. Well, I think it is possible. In fact, I know it is because I've applied some of the tips I'm about to go over to my own conversations and it's been extremely helpful. Some of these tips might seem a bit basic, but look around. It seems like society is getting better at talking and worse at having conversations. So let's go back to basics. Before we begin, I want to be clear that these tips are for everyone, and they can be applied to many topics outside of politics. So whether you're a leftist, a conservative, a no-labels kind of person, or an alien from outer space, I hope these tips help you to have better conversations. Tip number one, say hello, or something like it. Yep, that's right, say hello. So often we get caught up in the fervor of a discussion or debate that we forget we're talking to another human being. And we will be talking to humans for some time until the AIs begin replacing us. So go ahead and say something like, Hi, it's good to talk with you. Or anything really, as long as you are making a connection. You want to set the groundwork for the conversation so that the other person knows that you're not just some opponent. This is particularly true of online discussions where you can't see the other person. But whether you're talking to an old man at the bar, a sibling at the dinner table, or some stranger on the internet, acknowledge them as a person and not just a package of ideas. And by the way, this isn't so that you can manipulate your counterpart. Your goal should not be to trick anybody. You have to genuinely want to talk to the person, and that takes practice. So if you find yourself in a bad mood to begin with, it might not be the right time for a controversial conversation. Tip number two. Try to come to an agreement about the definitions of key terms. I've listened to so many conversations where people appear to be talking past each other, only to find out that it all comes down to a major difference in how they define a term. It's happened to me as well. Sometimes, defining some terms in the beginning would have made the conversation much more productive. So, how exactly do you define a term during the conversation? Well, it might sound anticlimactic, but just look it up in a dictionary. Most of us carry them in our pockets, so there isn't a good excuse to not use it. If you're talking about a more niche term or concept, then perhaps Wikipedia can be of help. Just remember, Wikipedia, as helpful as it is, doesn't always get things right. So, if you and your conversation partner come to a general or even tentative agreement about the definition of something, then fantastic. You're now on solid ground for the conversation. But if you can't come to any kind of agreement on a definition, then you really are speaking two different languages. At that point, it's a good place to exit the conversation or change the subject. Tip number three. Be honest. Honesty is a sword that cuts both ways in a conversation. Failure to be honest in a conversation will result in two possible things happening. Either you will overstate your own confidence in your argument, or you will make a show of accepting a point that you actually disagree with. While these two failures can coincide, more frequently they are associated with specific personality types. If you are a person with a tendency to be stubborn, you are more likely to display false confidence when making a claim that you know deep down has some big holes in it. On the other hand, if you are a person who likes to get along well with everyone, you are more likely to outwardly accept various arguments that your counterpart makes, while inwardly you remain dubious. Both of these scenarios are ones you should avoid, as they weaken you, not just in the conversation, but as a person. So, what can you do instead? Well, honesty first requires an understanding of your own limitations. If you come into a conversation with a decent understanding of how well-versed you are in the subject at hand, you will be better prepared to talk and listen without either overplaying or underplaying your hand. In some sense, a controversial conversation is like walking across a log. If you are too confident and start jumping around, you'll fall and make a fool of yourself, in the same way that you'll make a fool of yourself by pretending you know something that you really don't. Likewise, if you are too timid and can barely take a step on the log, you won't make much progress just like you won't make much progress if you outwardly accept whatever your counterpart says while you inwardly disagree. Here are some great phrases and sentences to use that will not only help your conversations to go more smoothly, but will actually give you an inward sense of honesty that will make you feel stronger. I'm not sure if my idea is doable, but... What you are arguing for seems possible, but... I want to stop before we go further, because I find myself disagreeing with your premise, and I'd like to explain why. Of course, there are many other ways to incorporate these ideas into language. As you practice, you will undoubtedly find certain ways of speaking that sit well with you. Tip number four. Acknowledge a good point when you hear it. 
This is very closely related to the previous tip, but it is so important on its own that it bears repeating. When talking with someone who disagrees with almost everything you say, it can be difficult to admit a good point when you hear one, because you might feel that if you concede or admit any common ground, you've somehow lost the conversation. But actually, the opposite is true. By acknowledging a good point, or noting a point of common agreement, you actually make it easier for the other person to trust you. This is because you have demonstrated a degree of honesty which we already talked about. Something I've noticed about this approach is that it is often contagious, meaning that your conversation partner might start to acknowledge your points as well. If, however, your conversation partner never acknowledges a strong point or common ground, make a note to yourself that they might not be in the right place, which leads me to tip number five. Know when to end the conversation or change the subject. Sometimes you'll find yourself at an impasse where nothing seems to be going anywhere. But how do you know when you should stop the conversation or change the subject? The first sign is if you or your counterpart gets angry. Once someone starts yelling, insulting you personally, or gets extremely irritated, the conversation is over. There's very little chance that it's going to be productive from that point onward. There's a famous proverb that says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So, if someone gets harsh with you, or gets angry, do not answer in an equally harsh manner. Instead, acknowledge the difference of opinion calmly and end the conversation. This is much easier said than done in the heat of the moment and does take practice. The second sign that you should end the conversation is this. If you and your counterpart begin to speculate too much, it's probably time to stop talking. After too much speculation, no one really learns anything. So instead, you should part ways, get more information about the thing that you are speculating about, and then perhaps bring it up in a future conversation. Now, I should note that, of course, it's fun sometimes to have highly speculative conversations, but just be sure ahead of time that your counterpart is on board and willing to join you with your head in the clouds. Well, that's it. Of course, there are lots of other more specific ways to have better political conversations, but making a connection with your counterpart, agreeing on key definitions, putting honesty first, acknowledging good points, and knowing when to exit a conversation are foundational. If you practice these things, or even just one of them, your conversations will get better. Please share your own tips for better conversations in the comments with each other, or maybe even stories about how your favorite or least favorite conversations have gone. Please do not subscribe to this channel. I'm very busy right now. If you people keep subscribing, I'm going to have to keep making more content. Thanks for watching.